guys, welcome to today. Today is all about Chino. Some good, some bad. But first, we have to check Penny. So take a look at this. Sam was so worried about leaving this fly mask on her. It took, oh my gosh, Penny, you pooed in your water bucket. That's disgusting. Looks like little brown apples floating around. That is what happens when she can't see. Oh my gosh. And if you guys are worried why she can't see, look at her mask. It's covered in crap. Shh. It's okay. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. I'm just going to undo your mask. It's okay. We're going to take it off. Yeah, you're okay. She's used to the sound. She knows all about this. But she, is she? she is. But she just can't see. I know she can't see because her mask is covered in junk. Ugh. This is what happens when you sleep, Penny girl. How are her eyes Penny. though? That's the question. Bob, yeah. I'm gonna see if Penny likes these things. All right, so basically, the mask, we don't like it. Although it may have done the job. Oh, 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 she's <laughs> Sophie gave her a little candy treat. She does not like that. It's a sour thing. All right, here's your medicine. You want that? So her eye doesn't look like I have to clean it or do anything with it. So um, she definitely needs, um, a fly mask. If this is your medicine, my f my friend. Oh, girl. Sam has to put on a wait a hal on a halter. I just shove it up there. She just stands. I know I'd be bragging about how good she is, but you guys are right. She's not perfect. <laughs> They're called ice breakers. Yeah, they probably break her belly. Okay, don't bite it. Okay. They're called icebreakers. Right. You should try them with your horse. Finn and Chino love them. Here you go, Penny. I got some new shavings for you. You're going to get a clean stall tonight. But, I mean, her eyes are good. So what I should do is put her outside today and see if her eyes tear up from the sun and from the light and from the wind. So basically all the crap that usually gets in her eyes is on the mask, but I agree. She does not poop in her water bucket. Okay, so while the ponies eat, we're gonna do an experiment. We're gonna look through the fly mask. So there, we can see perfectly through the fly mask in the day. You guys see that? You guys are in the fly mask. See, here you go. Uh, where the dirt is, not so much. So let's check in the dark what happens. In a dark space now, and I'm gonna put you guys in the mask. What do you guys see? Can you guys see through that? Nope. Can you see yeah. out of it? Cool. All right, let's just see here. In it, out of it. In it, out of it. You just put it on your own head. See if you can see. No, we're going someplace. Put it on your own head and see if you can see. I believe in you. I can't. Yeah. My friend Susan said, Laura, do an experiment. See if this works. And yeah, you can't see at night, you guys. Especially, and people say horses can see so good, but horses actually have problems adjusting from dark to light, different than people. Like they're not, they, they don't, their vision isn't as good as some other animals. So yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna continue that even though it worked. Only thing that's worked so far. Hmm. We're in a conundrum. I might try a different color. One person, I think it was Katie Johnson maybe, says that, Black is the easiest color to see out of for everyone. And then another lady says the tan, like a nude one, is easier white. to see out of. I don't know, I'll look into it, I'm gonna look it up. But we have way more pressing problems on our hands today. Good girl, you had all your breakfast? I have to clean you because you still somehow managed to get medicine, or to get dirt on you. I also wanna try the drops again because a friend gave me an idea. I'd be good at this, but I'm gonna try it. My friend, who is a pro at this, said to palm the drops, put your hand down like you're petting her. Yes, and then, <laughs> I can't do it. She does better if I just drop them in. Yeah, I can't do it. Yes, yes. Penny. She's like, why am I not having a treat yet? She looks more brown, not on camera. 
Yeah, see, she, her eye has staining, so if you got teardrops that fall out of her, that's staining. It's annoying. It's bleach. All right, wait. We got the whole door open. We have no time for her fun and games today, so she's just going to have to go out on her own. But she's just standing here. I'm just standing here. I got nothing up saying wait. She, okay, there you go, Pen. You can go. Good girl. What a pretty girl she is. Nice and slow like her daddy taught her. All right, is it kind of creepy that I called Sam her daddy? <laughs> kind of creepy. Come on, Malt. Hey, what are you doing down here? Ruby. Get in here. Our dad says that he dates his dad. Yeah. We're gonna do a quick clean of the barn, and then I'm, and then we're gonna head out. Chino is not well. Yeah, Chino is sick. We don't know what's going on. Our barn owner called us today and said that he was fine last night. Ate, did everything fine. Ate this morning, was fine, but after he ate. Seemed lethargic and slow moving. So I don't know if he's like popping an abscess, which wouldn't surprise me because any horse with like stone bruises or, you know, that being ouchy is a perfect breeding ground for, for abscesses. Or I don't know if he's about to colic or I don't, I mean, he ate. I don't know if he's popping a ulcer, like, Stress will do that to you too. Okay, never again, Penny Pickle. That was disgusting. So anyway, we're gonna go, we're gonna do chores really quick. We're gonna head to the barn. Luckily the farrier's coming because hopefully he can shed some light on what's going on with our boy. It's a different farrier. Yeah, it's, Here, a, dif it feels really good. Yeah, it's a different farrier. Kind of bad timing to have a new farrier. But I want you guys to know that this new year, new Laura, is me not freaking out. Like, when I hear stressful things, my first reaction is to like, my adrenaline gets going and I freak out and I did that. And then I was like, Laura, calm yourself right now. Because I didn't want the kids to see me freak out, especially Gabby, because then it makes it seem worse than it could be. And if it's bad, we're just gonna tackle it. And then I asked myself all the questions, like, what are you afraid of? Like, what makes you afraid when something bad happens? And I, I don't know the answer. I think, like, most of the time, I'm trying to empty her bucket. I'm try, trying to empty my bucket here. I think for me, it's just being vulnerable and having to, like, have somebody help us. And, and even though I'm good at that, it's definitely still a hard thing to, like, be powerless. Yeah, Gabby and I want to go skiing. Okay, I never skied, I'm not gonna lie. It's not my thing. Gabby wants to go. Child, so yeah. Of course, I will remember. When Gabby was little, so Gabby was on the team, on the ski team before. Yeah. And she got frostbite. Yeah, like, I think I told that story before. Really she was little she tiny girl. Frostbite. She was. Nope, you don't. You're good. She was fearless. Oh yeah, I remember that. Nope, you don't. She did get frostbite before. Like she came in when she was like four or something, and she her feet were so cold. She was just screaming. Uh oh. Anyways. Um, uh, Gabby won the gold medal in her group. She was on the team and she won the gold medal. She was the only one brave enough to go on the big huge mountain. But yeah, so we want to go skiing again. Down. Skiing is cancelled for this oh, year, I however. By the next time I went there, I got to go on the biggest one too. Like we learned that one and I got to go on the biggest one. But everybody else is scared except for this one yeah. guy. Yeah, that's why she, that was your scared. coach. That was your coach. Uh-huh. That's why it? Gabby won the gold medal because she's the only one. Oh, your cat's gone. No, me and this other boy. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so she won the gold medal out of her group. Sophie's still at the beginner stuff. Uh, she's like me. She's like me. She was she was really little, but she was like me. Yeah, this is not that fun for me. Remember? It was hard. I know. Okay, let's get done. I spilled the bucket. Okay, so I'm packing up some stuff to bring to the barn. I've got some banamine and some Prevacox. I'm gonna bring uh, some Epsom salts. Okay, so we're headed to the barn. Comment and we're gonna below. check out Chino. Comment below. If you guys have a poppet. If you guys have a poppet. Sophie's really into uh, fidget toys right now. She ordered a bunch last night. She's excited. I'm kind of excited too because it doesn't matter how old you are, everybody gotta love a fidget toy. Especially like things that you can squeeze. Yeah, that's freezing. Whoa, turn on the heat. You don't even have the heat on. Yes. Okay, so I'm waiting for the car to warm up. I don't even know if I have my warm gloves. It's gonna suck. Okay, so basically I like was trying to talk myself through it all and having a little bit of knowledge is such a good thing. So I was thinking like, I started to worry and think like, okay, obviously the footing outside, it's, it was hard on him after he got his shoes off. 
and so if you got some bruises, which we suspected, I know that sometimes bruises can create the perfect situation for an abscess. And so then, now I'm worried about an abscess, if it went undetected, which we have been checking them, um, it could travel up into your leg and become, then that's when you start to like notice signs like lethargy, like the bar, like the barn owner told me that he was kind of lethargic today. But then I remembered that pain in horses causes lethargy, not just like signs of infection. So then I'm talking myself into believing that it's just stone bruising and that's not healing because of the ground, but then there's been snow for the last couple of days. So anyway, the farrier's coming today too. So. Today was gonna be all about Chino regardless of this happening. So we're gonna go and we're gonna check it out. I got everything I think I need, which I'll end up not having anything I need probably. Did you get the bucket? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go take care of our Chino boy and see what happens. And I know the old Laura would have been like, oh, why is this happening? Like, we've had so much trouble. We knew we had flat feet. We, I feel it's just a learning process. It's just a learning thing. Whenever God wants you to learn something, he sends you a lot of ways to learn it. So that's what we're doing today. Okay. We're going to learn Chino's feet. So somebody's already in the barn with the farrier. And so we don't want to go in there. We're doing like, because of COVID, we're trying to like respect each other's space. So she's already in there. So we're going round and we're going to grab Chino. Gabby's also going to use the Caratex. Oh, we need his halter. It just makes me sad that all the other horses are far and he's still here because he's sore. Oh, yeah, he's with Tex and Oakley. That's not Oakley. No, Oakley's still oh, there. So all right. Thin. All right. Come on, sweet, handsome man. Today's your day. So we might end up just putting him on some stall rest, getting him off the ground so he has a chance to heal. But we're gonna check, see if he's got any swelling. We're gonna do it all right now. So one fun thing that we have in Canada are icicles that are this big. And, uh-oh. Uh-oh, I can't break it, Sophie. I don't wanna break the barn. But, oh, there we go. The girls love an icicle. Mm -hmm. It's like a na mm -hmm. nature's popsicle. Grimaud's back on the Oh, so he must have jumped. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely having pain. Like, he should be better by now. And with the snow, I thought that the footing would be like a little bit better for him. But he doesn't go out of the... so sad for him. I can't believe we let it go this long. Leg swollen. That's bad news. All right, so. Oh. oh. Wrong, wrong side. That side. Oh my God. That's unbelievable. Crap. Uh, oh, he is really lethargic. He is in bad shape. It's okay. No, no, no. The went down a little bit. Oh. From so walking, because like when he's getting too much. Okay, so what we've discovered is that this has nothing, nothing to do with what's been going on with him. His leg is really swollen and he's really not excited to walk on it. So I talked to Fiona and she thinks that it's cellulitis. I don't think you should walk him because if he has this, he needs stall rest. So I talked to Fiona and she thinks it could be cellulitis which can come from like scratches or like a cut. Gabby, look, I'm, I saw a cut. No, so I'll show you guys. Do you guys, can you go, I don't know if you can see, but that leg is, is incredibly swollen. So obviously I phoned the vet. We won't be putting shoes on Chino today. I'm torn between. You to go to the yeah, I know, I need to go tell the farrier that we can't put shoes on Chino today. I might have him check him over though. All right, let's see if we can walk him in. She knows I'm obsessed. He's gonna have rotten teeth before you know it. Gabby feeds him. How many Sour Patch Kids have you been feeding him? I don't know. All right, so we have him in the stall. We're waiting for the vet. So this is completely something unrelated to his sore feet. This is something completely new, something totally different. Oh, I could smell it. Okay, so we found the vet. The vet was on his way like a, about an hour and a half away from here. And the secretary rerouted him. She rerouted him, which is so kind. I don't know if it's an emergency, but if it's like a sepsis, if it's a sepsis, which is like a poison, like an infection, then it's definitely an emergency. 
I was packing up, I was like, mm, should I bring antibiotics? And I was like, no, I won't bring antibiotics. But if he gives antibiotics, we need to get a liquid stuff, not the powder that we have, okay? Because I hate the powder. No, remember the antibiotics? We were given Storm antibiotics when he got that cut a couple years ago. And then all of a sudden, he, oh, he's in pain. Oh, he can't even put his foot down. That's how much it hurts him. Like he gets shaking. We, I'm gonna, I brought Butte, or we leave Butte at the barn, but now I don't wanna give him the Butte until after the vet comes. Why is there just like one post? one post? Somebody's here. Gabby, I want you to look under his foot and see if there's something stuck in there. Oh, he is in so much pain. So um, the reason why I'm showing you guys this stuff is because this is how I learn. This is how people learn. So for all of you people that have horses that have never encountered whatever is going on with uh, Chino right now might learn something oh, from this. Here. Okay, so that has been here. Still here. There's a tiny little spot that looks like a little bit of a rub that could be the issue. Seems like it could be the issue. We're like really gone serious. to get the hoof testers for the front. Obviously, it's like a cellulitis, but he just is worried about because there's no clear indication of where it came from. He's worried. Oh my God, I'm so glad that we knew it was cellulitis. And Fiona said, call the vet. Good thing what? we called Fiona. Yeah, good thing. Well, we always call Fiona. Like, I'll never get rid of Fiona. She'll always be in our life. She's our it's savior. I know. But uh, he has a high fever. Okay, so he brought in a little machine. I don't know what it was for, but he used it to look and see if there was any fluid pockets. He's basically doing everything he can to try and figure out what it is. You know, so far, we're pretty sure it's cellulitis. It's hard to see him not be able to stand, though. It's really, really bad for him. 39.8 was the temperature. But you could tell he had a temperature just looking him in his eye. Like, you know that glaze? Oh, yeah, because you haven't had kids who's had, who've had temperatures. So you go to see Sam and Sophie when they that get a fever. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah, Gabby's never had a fever in her whole entire life. Oh, that's not true. She had one when she was Once two. Once when I was two. Once when she was two. Oh, it was the loveliest that she's ever been in her life. She actually let me hold her, laid on my lap. Before that, never. Not even as a newborn baby. She didn't want to be held. I could use her to have a fever again. Just one fever before you're grown. So. He now has to have his front hooves soaked. So it's being soaked for 15 minutes each. Yeah. All right. So and there's a lot of stuff to tell you guys. Like, he likes it I love our vet. Warm. Yeah. Tell them how you had to get the warm water. I had to get the warm water in the heated bathroom, but the hot, the warm water, there's no waiting for it to get warm. You turn it on directly, it's like burning boiling hot water. So what? how did you have to like put add cold to it? Yeah, I had to add cold and it was just Yeah. Rough. Mom, that's okay. why next time we go come here, I'm gonna bring a cup and hot chocolate mix. Yeah, well guess when you're chocolate. coming back or guess when you're coming back? Tonight. Yeah, you're coming what? back tonight. Ew. I'll probably have to come with you. What about dad? Yeah, and dad. No, All right, dad. Dad. so he's gonna need his neck on guy because he has a fever. When you have a fever, you're freezing. Fever. I'm freezing already. I'm, I'm freezing too. Okay, I'm gonna, Gabby, you soak that one. Put lots of Epsom salts. Isn't it good I brought the Epsom salts? Like, I ended up bringing all the things we needed except for the antibiotics. I'm gonna tell you guys everything right now while the girls are here so Gabby can hear. Okay, so we got like a lot of papers. Okay, so basically, let's see if I can remember everything. A official diagnosis is he does have cellulitis, which is like an infection. And he has a teeny tiny rub, not even a scratch, not nothing. He has a teeny no, tiny little rub. Let me see if I can he show you. He on his hawk. Yeah, that's. From him laying down and getting up. Oh, is that what that's from? Oh yeah, he picked it. There was like, there wasn't even a scab on there. Or there was like a little scab on there and he picked it to yeah. see what it was. So that's what it's that's, from. That's what it's from. So basically. Laying down and getting up. That's likely where it came from. You can't ever tell. Like he was really thorough. So he. So he got an infection in there and it started to go up his leg and it can be disastrous for horses. So that is thing number one. He has a fever, which is why when I saw him, he's really lethargic in our, okay. our bar, me too, in our barn guy said he was really lethargic. So there's that. So that is uh, cellulitis. He has cellulitis. That was an emergency. That's why we phoned the vet. What? His tail is thinner. I could barely hold it in my hands like this when it was all smushed down. Gabby, that's the least of our problems. Look, it was triple that size. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so he gave him a shot in the neck of 
an anti-inflammatory to try and bring down the swelling. He gave him a shot in the neck of antibiotics so they'll work right away. He got a shot in the neck of <coughs> just two things? Yeah, two things. Two things? I so, was feeling the bumps where he... Oh, and a shot in the neck of Butte. So he got three shots all, so Butte is like a pain reliever, so that is going to make him a little bit better soon. So he's going to be on antibiotics for the next seven days. He's going to be taking sure. Butte for the next three days. He's going to like, he's got all the, so all the shots that he gave him, he's going to be taking orally too. So we're going to be coming twice a day to do that. Plus, where he's going to do a sweat wrap. We're going to be doing a sweat wrap, which is something brand new that we have never done before, but he showed us a video, explained it all perfectly. We have everything we need for it. I have to go home and get it. So we're coming back to do the vet, to do the sweat wrap a little later today. So that's his back. That's what happened today, unrelated to the front. So what happened in the front of him, remember you guys, he's been off, unsound since we took his shoes off. He said there's a little bit of evidence of a little bit of bruising, nothing major. Um, so he looked at the left foot, which I felt he was most off, Gabby and I felt he was most off in the left foot. Um, and there was a little bit of a nail, two pieces of a nail from his shoes left inside of his foot. And I don't know, it, it, whatever it did, it went up there and it caused a lot of problems and it made him sore. So he had to dig it out. He dug it out. He said that we need to soak his feet just to rule out any abscess. If he does have an abscess brewing, it's probably not a big one because he messed around there and tried to like see if there was one. Nothing visible. So... Um, he doesn't think that it's an abscess or if it is, it's not a very big one. So we're going to soak for a couple days to rule that out. So then he went to the right foot. He said that the right foot seemed more sore than the one with the nail, possibly a small abscess there. So like I said, we're going to soak his feet in Epsom salts for three days, two days, three days. So we got a lot of stuff to do to cure our boy Chino. And then after all that, I'm gonna use the Caratex. Like, so all the medicine I bought for him, can't use any of them. I don't wanna give him anything while he's taking all these medications. Now he's standing on the sore leg and resting the not sore leg. Can we come in? No. Are you peeing? No. Somebody has to go stand up. <laughs> this is where we hang you out. You were too. standing up there. Oh so. uh, yeah, well I wanna get warm too. I gotta phone dad and tell him everything that happened. It's your job. Out there. You. I feel bad that we're all stuck in the bathroom. <laughs> Get your mitts. Are those your mitts over there? Yeah. Okay. I feel bad that we're all stuck in the bathroom. Gabby keeps checking on them. Yeah, okay. like Mom, hopefully... your shift. Yeah, yeah I'm going out there in a minute, but I feel bad that he's stuck there. But we're frozen, you guys. Like I didn't know we were gonna end up being here this long. We none of us ate yet. We're going home. We're gonna eat and then come back and do the whole thing. But um. I'm just grateful that our bar owner messaged us and let us know that he was struggling because cellulitis can be really dangerous. Uh, Chino Bambino has nine lives, you guys. All right, so we are home and we are frozen. I had to put on my slippers. I had to like stick my hands in hot water. I stood up and my dog came downstairs. Yeah. See? I yeah, Sophie's dog keeps running up the stairs and then I'm like, Sophie, your dog went upstairs. And then as soon as Sophie stands up to go upstairs and get her dog, her dog comes back down. We were in such a hurry to leave this morning that we didn't eat and I'm so cold inside. All I could think about to make to eat for lunch is homemade chicken noodle soup, you guys. This is, oh, actually it's turkey noodle soup, but it is my one of my favorite things to eat. I love it. Gabby loves it. Sophie does not. Sam does not. I find chicken noodle soup one of the best ways to get back on track though. Like if you've been eating a lot of sweets and stuff because it's been Christmas and holidays, then um, if you eat chicken noodle soup, I find it's one of the things that really sets me back on track. So I'm really excited to have it. I'm so hungry. Our job right now is to get warm before we have to go back to the barn. We're waiting for Sam to come back. Um, I got the saran wrap. We have to use saran wrap. He wants us to use alcohol to wet his legs with first. And then we have some stuff down at the barn. I'll show you guys later. So I ordered another fidget toy thing. It's a set of fidget toys. And I'm really excited. She'll show you when they come in. So, I might be oh, no, don't do that to me. I can pick you up. I just Almost. need to be a little taller. Can I skip yeah, this then? Honestly, I credit our barn manager for alerting us today. Like he said, he knew as soon as Chino went out this morning that he didn't seem right and he knew that we needed to come there. So I appreciate so, I appreciate him so much. Like we've had our horses places before I'm trying to work. where they, Stella was foundering and having like really bad problems and, and, and like we've found storm before in a pile of blood and nobody let us know. Like 
having a good barn people is such an important thing and even other people at that barn if they notice something they'll call us and message us so that is a, such a huge thing like i'm so grateful to have that barn he's eating happy to eat chino bambino we got a lot of stuff for you dude so here we are hi we're here to doctor him up okay so we're spraying on some alcohol Wait a down there around his leg. Okay, that's good. That's good. He only steals that whenever you put it. Okay, so then we're gonna put our standing wraps on him. Okay, so now we're gonna put a standing uh so now we're putting our standing wrap on. And then we're gonna put saran wrap around it. I don't know why. Our saran wrap is hard to work. How many people does it take to wrap a horse? Okay, so we got the we got the expert doing it now. We bought these standing wraps and the bandages. Um, I don't know, a while ago when we got a new horse. No. We bought it for Storm. When Storm oh cut yeah, we bought it for Storm when he cut himself. Okay, now he actually has to stand on the leg. We're living quick in this world, gonna get it right now. Better keep this on, Chino Bambino. This is the medicine he's gonna take. This is one of the medicines. You want it? Uh oh. Gabby breaks that her horse is good as Penny. Let's see you guys. Okay, what do we do, guys? The standing wrap bandages. That wrap. Yeah, I got that wrap. That wrap in your bag over there. Okay. I just put it in your bag. Get the vet wrap. So we're gonna vet wrap it. Good thing I brought vet wrap with me. Believe it or not, we actually had all of this stuff at home. His eyes don't look as cloudy. This morning when I looked at his eyes, you could see that he had a fever. Looks professional, you guys. Looking good. Like, sh they did a good job. Yeah, already you can see, like, that's just the support of the pressure is making him a little bit better for walking on it. Like, he's actually standing on it right now. Didn't even try it yet, Gino. He's gonna do whatever he can to get out of it. Yeah, he's looking right in her eye. Like, please, don't make me. You should let Sam do it. Sam, Dad's really good at it. Like, he has to get this medicine in there. Okay, let, slow, let, go yeah, go, slow. go slow. A little bit at a time, so he has time to swallow it. No, you should have it all down there for so you can Yeah, but he spits it out. He can't. There you go. Yeah, here, Dad. It's a hard syringe to use. Okay, I gotta go give it, actually give it to me. All right, so uh, Chino had his uh, butte. We have the powder, we just put it in here. That should help him. Definitely looks a little better, still swollen. Still not moving well, what are you doing? So Gabby just told me that she just realized that she has butte and antibiotics on her hand and she's eating candy. Yeah, that's a real horsewoman, you guys. That's what happens when you're starving and you gotta eat something. Can we get McDonald's? No, we just had soup. No. If we don't notice a change by tomorrow, then we'll be getting the vet back out. So thankful that so many things happened correctly today for Chino to get taken care of. If you guys, uh, you guys probably already know, but what's it called? Uh, cellulitis can turn bad really quickly. And with the luck of God, with the grace of God, everything turned out perfectly. Our vet was headed an hour away and did a loop, turned around and came back to us and helped us out. And our barn manager on, and our barn owner, honestly, was a dream helping us out as well. Uh, anyway, that is it for today. Let's hope for a better tomorrow. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Don't you know that you're beautiful? Just the way